Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this plane here. This is the new Ezio 1500 EP from Hobby King. Now I need to say a very big thank you to Hobby King because we've had this for about three or four weeks. So we've had it well in advance of it being publicly available. So I've had a really good chance to put this thing through its paces and to take it out and fly it. So in this video what I'm going to do is first of all we'll talk a little bit about the model itself. We'll talk about the specs and I'll show you what comes in the box and we'll then do a little bit about the build. The build is very quick and straightforward because there's only a handful of parts in the box. The two wing halves, the fuselage and the tail feathers and once those are all connected then you're good to go. Talk a little bit about the setup. I'll make my Tyrannus model memory for this available in the description. So if you're using a Tyrannus radio and you want to set it up then you can copy mine as a start of a 10 talk a little bit about what it's like to fly, its flying characteristics, and then finally I'll talk about the summary at the end. So the first thing to talk about is the model itself, and let me just kind of set the scene here a little bit. I'm a pilot that is more interested in having long, lazy flights with the kind of models like Skywalkers. My favourite model from last year was actually the Tundra, and those models are a nice size, they're not too big, reasonably easy to transport but they have a really wide envelope in terms of speed so they float really well they're very easy to fly they're very forgiving they're the kind of models that inspire confidence so that's why I was really interested in getting my hands on this because this is a balsa version a very lightweight version and we'll look at that in a second of those kind of very large wing models that are great at soaring and gliding but with the powered foldable prop at the front it also has easily enough power to do acrobatics as well. So to unbox it uh, here's all the specs on the side so you can see what it actually is. Uh, I'll put the specs on the screen at the bottom as well from the manual so you can see exactly what we've got here. So it's a 1500 millimeter wide, 800 millimeters long, it's a 20 amp ESC, it's a 2212 900 kV motor and all at weight it's about 590 grams. I got mine with the little battery that I'm using here. The little battery is a Zippy Compact 1300 3S. I got mine slightly over. But as I'm pulling all the pieces out here, one of the things you've probably spotted is that the decals are actually not applied. Uh, the wings are all built and the covering is actually really nice. There isn't wrinkling on it at all, which occasionally you can get if the model's been shipped and there's been lots of changes in humidity and temperature in the shipping container. But this one is lovely. The body itself is very sleek. There's a lot of room inside for your receiver and under that black canopy is where the battery's going to fit. All the control horns are already fitted, so the bag of pieces is very small. You have a little spar that goes in between the wings and then the push rods, and that's your lot. First thing to do before you actually assemble the plane, I recommend actually installing all of the decals. Uh, the way I did it was using the hinge method, and just take your time with this. The more time you take, the better it's going to look. This was probably the part of the build that took the longest for me. And by just looking at the images on the outside of the box and in the manual, you can get a very good idea of where all these little things should go. So give yourself quiet time of about half an hour to get all these decals fitted and just make sure that the surfaces are nice and clean and just take your time pressing it down. Once all the decals are on, next thing to do is just center the servos, make sure everything's working and once you've got the servo centered you've got a reasonable idea of how close they are and also just make sure that the push rods on the back are going to work for the control surfaces. And then what I tend to do is I tend to cheat and just figure out what the middle position for all the servos are and that lets me program the Tyrannus just to make sure that everything's set. To put the wings on the top, it's pretty straightforward, put that little carbon rod in between the two and then push the two wing halves together and then you have the little leads here to plug into your receiver for each of the ailerons. Be aware though, it doesn't have a Y cable so you are going to have to set your radio up to have the aileron channels separate. Now that actually works quite well because that means that you can set up flapperons on this because one of the things that it doesn't have is separate flaps. 
The wings themselves are actually held onto the body by two screws. I'd recommend though popping a little bit of packing tape on the underside once you've uh, got the wings close together just because if you do it that way uh, I've noticed that because the wings are only held in by a nubbin at the front and those two screws with a protective cover at the back they can move very very slightly so I would put a little bit of tape or something over that seam before you install them and that will keep them in one place. The tail feathers fit really easily as well. Uh, they just plug in and you just need a little dab of glue to make sure that they don't move. I used a little bit of epoxy here. It talks about CA in the manual. Personally, I like epoxy just because it seems to be slightly less brittle in the event of a crash. Once you've got that set up, then it's just a case of snapping on and adjusting length of the control rods and tightening it all up. Throws you should be shooting for on the elevator, aileron and rudder. Uh, on the elevator and aileron, anything from 10 to 15 millimeter seems to be loads. 15 millimeter gives you lots of authority in throw, and the rudder 15 to 20 millimeters. Again, with 20 millimeters probably being the outside, because this is a slippery little plane when it gets up in the air. All at weight, including the battery that we're using, and again, I'm using a Zippy Compact 1300 is 597 grams so this thing even though it's a one and a half meter wingspan plane is very light and that's something that if you're used to more foam style gliders like this that you'll be surprised at out of the field you can really start to see the internal construction of the wing hold it up against the light and you can see the inside of the spars and the balsa wood construction of both the tail and the main wing parts too so what's it like to fly as I've already said at the beginning of the video, I like these kinds of planes that are very easy to fly and very floaty and that you can turn the engine off and just soar about all day and that are big enough so you can get a reasonable distance away without having to squint and try and figure out what your orientation is, but that's also very forgiving. And this plane is absolutely like that. This video here is actually from the maiden flight. So this is taken using a hat camera. So apologies for a little bit of the jerkiness. Didn't have anyone with me on this day to do some of the video. But what you can see here is this is without any trimming. All I needed was a little bit of up elevator. The rest of the control surfaces were in line with the wings and the tail feathers and they worked perfectly. But with that couple of clicks of up elevator, it was completely happy and it is very, very stable indeed. At about 20% throttle, it was just pootling around and was very, very happy. But if you give it full throttle, then you've got enough there for aerobatics, loops and rolls and those kind of things too. With the up tilt and the ends of the wings, it is very well behaved. Tip stalling is very gentle indeed. And it does have an awful lot of stability that inspires a lot of confidence. The underside of the wings has the big black dots on for the decals, so it's easy to spot orientation too. Even in this slightly overcast day, hopefully you can see how pretty the thing actually looks. Now one of the things I was interested in was how long the battery would last. Again, we're using a 1300 pack in the nose, that's giving perfect center of gravity. And for every minute of flight time, I'm using just over about 1% of the battery. Now I'm sure if you were flying it like you stole it, you'd probably get a little bit less. But even on a 1300 milliamp hour battery, you can easily get 30 minutes. Or if you're going to be going up to a reasonable altitude, cutting the engine and soaring and floating around with this, which you absolutely can with the wing loading that it's got, the very light weight, then you could easily get 40, 45 minutes out of such a very small battery. So in summary, what do I think? Well, the really good stuff is this is a really nice flying plane. Uh, if I just show you what one of the landings look like, you can see here that even with the engine cut, this thing doesn't want to stop flying. So it's very easy and very forgiving. So you don't have to be a super duper pilot in order to make this thing fly beautifully. It has a huge speed envelope. That 20% throttle, you can cruise around all day, and at that kind of level, you'll easily get half an hour, 40 minutes out of a little 1300 milliamp hour battery. It is very lightweight and well built. It's taken a couple of rough landings without any problems at all. The only thing that I did do is if it uh, catches a bit of grass and comes to a halt very abruptly, then the backs of the wings just open up slightly. So again, 
we'll talk about that in a second, but I'd recommend just putting a little line of tape uh, to join the wings underneath together just to help support them and stop that from happening and putting a lot of stress on those mounting holes at the backs of the main wings. I do like the fact it's very easy to remove the wing sections. If you just undo those two bolts then you can take the whole wing assembly off which makes it very easy to transport but personally I like the 1.5 meter size it can fit in a boot without any problems at all or it just kind of tucks under your arm nicely when you walk into the field without feeling that you're going to hit everybody when you look around to see who's talking to you behind. A couple of things to consider though this is a balsa model so it won't take crashes like foam you will damage it if you have a really bad landing or you hit a fence or something on the way in if you've messed up your approach do make sure that you've got something nice and soft to land on it doesn't have landing gear and there's no reinforcement on the bottom of the plane so if you're going to be landing on anything slightly rough i'd probably recommend covering the bottom of the plane with something like a layer of tape that's going to protect the covering on the balsa the thing that took the longest time with this plane building this guy that actually took longer than setting up and configuring the radio and setting up the electronics was actually the application of the decals. It does take a little bit of time. Make sure that you've got the decals in the right place. Use the similar method to the one that I showed in the video and it should work fine. Just an aside, if you're interested in me showing a decal application and that's something that you've not done before then let me know and I'll make another video where I show uh, the two methods that I tend to use to get it in place. Do think about putting a flapper on mix on the radio there's no separate flaps on this which initially I was thinking oh, that's a bit of a shame but actually with the flapper ons it worked beautifully and again I'll put my radio mix in the description so if you have a Taranis you can download it and have a look at how I did that. So you won't have to mess around as much setting up the two aileron mixes on your radio. At the moment I'm recording this before the model is actually released. So I've only got an indication as to what the final price is going to be. It's about in the region of 120 to 130 pounds. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go and have a look at it. But if like me, you like those kind of planes like the Skywalkers, like the Bixlers, uh, like things like the Tundra, those kind of planes that are very easy to fly, that just seem to want to stay in the air and super stable and, and very forgiving, then this, if you fancy a balsa model, is definitely worth a look. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.